video stream every morning at 560theanswer.com. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM 560, The Answer. Good morning, Dan and Amy. And so there's a couple of bills bouncing around Springfield. All the big, bad, the bad, uh, big government ideas, I should say. Uh, rent control. Rent's too high? It's well, that guy, the rent too damn high candidate? Yeah. Um, I think he understood that rent control in New York City was one of the reasons it was too damn high. Uh, that's the experience in San Francisco. Uh, and now members of Illinois Democratic Party's Maduro caucus want to bring that to this state. Uh, two bills. Will Gazzardi, socialist from Chicago, uh, House Bill 2430, would repeal Illinois' Rent Control Preemption Act, which precludes any municipality in the state from enacting laws controlling the rents of residential commercial properties. Maddie Hunter, over on the Senate side, Democrat from Chicago, uh, she would go a bit further, establish six elected regional rent control boards across Illinois, funded by landlords, and tie annual rent hikes to no more than the change in inflation. (laughs) The... The housing market isn't bad enough in Chicago and Illinois because largely largely because of property taxation. We want to institute more government uh, price controls to distort the market further. For more on this topic, we're pleased to be joined by Jane Garvey. She's the president of the Chicago Creative Investors Association. Jane, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan and Amy. So, um, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, please. I was going to suggest that the bill numbers you've got are last year's. Oh, last they are. Session oh. Ended and then, oh, yep. Okay. And in the current session, there's five different bills that have been proposed. But they do this. That they are proposing do... rent control in one form or another. But these are a couple of the uh, the substance substantive uh, substantively what I've described as what uh, yes, legislators... very, very definitely. Okay. Well, so here's the thing: um, the experience in San Francisco, for example, was uh, actually studied by a few uh, Stanford economists. Uh, I don't know if they're as smart as Will Gazzardi or Maddie Hunter, um, but uh, they published a paper a couple of years ago finding that uh, rent controls in San Francisco reduced rental housing supply by 15 percent, which in turn increased rental prices in the other parts of the city by around 5 percent, So, uh, which is obviously a multiple of inflation. So it, it turns out, now let me see if I can summarize this. If you artificially limit the supply of housing, you artificially increase demand, which artificially increases prices. Do I have my Econ 101 correct? Yes. I've actually been thinking I need to send some of these people some economics texts. <laughs> not, not that facts would ever confuse them into sensible thought. Well, and, um, and but, so, so you so but, yeah, give us your perspective on this. One of the things on that's this, going yeah. on here in Illinois that's a little bit different than what they're doing, what they've got proposed here is rent control across the board for all residential housing. So there won't be a segment that doesn't, isn't affected. And at least my perspective on that is that you diminish the the attractiveness of investment. The investment dollars go elsewhere for building new housing. They go elsewhere for maintaining housing. And if at all possible, landlords are going to convert to something that is not you know, like a condo or sell the house to an owner-occupant. Well, and that's... so your availability of housing is going to shrink. And the people that these guys are trying to help are the lowest level income earners. Right, but They'll don't be we the have... least likely to get to rent the places that are available. But what, don't we have Section 8 housing right now for people who need, you know, subsidized living Yeah, costs? you subsidize yeah. it on the one hand and you cap it on the other hand. Because a lot of people yep. that I know t- on our street, they're, they're selling their houses because they want to rent because our property taxes are too high. So it's more attractive mm-hmm. for them to rent. Yeah, so we've got increased demand. Mm-hmm. And because the people who have been homeowners are selling and moving into rentals, that's, again, increasing the demand. So I don't know why we need to subsidize everybody. I mean, somebody wants to rent a seven thousand dollar condo in downtown Chicago. Why do we need to set rent 
and subsidize that on the back of whoever owns the place. Well, even if you didn't, even at, yeah, the super vouchers that we've talked about on this show before, but even if you didn't, even if he had just said, uh, you know, uh, $1,500 per month rent or lower or a, a particular income threshold cap and to do this statewide, I mean, uh, what are rental property owners going to do in the state? Liquidate their holdings? That's what's going on. At least the people who are paying attention. And 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 where do you uh, for for people who are listening who have rental properties, uh, where do you see this legislation going? I mean, has uh, uh, has there been any indication from Governor Pritzker? I haven't seen it whether or not he'd sign any of this any of these bills. Um, I think he has said he would. You know, it's kind of yet to be seen. I I am trying to get the message out that rent control is bad for everyone, from the tenant to the landlord. To the regular property owner whose taxes are going to go up as the value of rental property goes down, the taxes will go up for everybody else to well, compensate. Well, why is the media picking up on this story? I kind of think they're In very biased. Let's just put it that way. I think you guys know that. Well, so here's the thing. I mean, this is just, look, Chicago, Illinois, uh, the laws of economics don't apply here. We had this conversation with Gary mm-hmm. Chico. There's a restaurant recession going on in New York City because of the $15 minimum wage. We do the same thing here. Oh, somehow we'll figure it out. Somehow it'll all just work out. We'll just find the money. You, 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 got, uh, you got food service workers who can't figure out after advocating for a $15 minimum wage why they lost their jobs in New York City. They can't connect those dots. And the politicians in this city and state prey on the same inability to connect dots because of they haven't been chastened at the ballot box for doing so, and that certainly continues in Chicago. So why should anybody pay attention to what, uh, you know, you uh, fat cat capitalist rental property owners have to say? This is all about uh, uh, extracting from the haves to provide guarantees to the have-nots. That's the new, That's the well, it's not the new, that's the blue state model of governance. Well, it, it very much is, but the the problem and the thing that they don't see is the people they're trying to help are the ones who are going to be hurt by it. The tenant that you know can't afford where they're living now and is complaining. First of all, they ought to live some. They ought to move someplace they can afford. But that's aside from us. If they're the lowest of the low in terms of being available or able to afford something, they aren't the, going to be the ones that get that apartment. If I still happen to own something here and I've got an apartment that becomes available and I'm looking around for candidates, I'm going to take the best qualified person. And it's not going to be the person that can, can't afford the apartment. The other thing, too, about this with rental properties, you know, somebody has a home and, or, and, or somebody, let me think about the city. Somebody has a, a two or three flat and they live in one and they rent a couple of the others. This is a way to build a little bit of equity mm-hmm. and a little bit of wealth. Uh, which is, you know, what everybody's supposed to do. Take care of yourself, uh, use your money wisely, invest, save, recoup the benefits. And now they're saying, well, don't do that. They're disincentivizing savings, which is, I thought, something that we wanted people to do. Well, not if we want an entire welfare state, which is kind of what I see the look here. I mean, let's take all of the rental housing. And by the way, if there's not enough affordable housing because we destroy the incentives for it, then as government... We can step in and build it. Yeah, right. You know, five hundred thousand dollars to build something that ought to cost on the open market about two hundred thousand to build. So go for it. Yeah. So it's where do we? Money. Where do we go from here? <laughs> well, I am hoping that we can wake up the tenants because the tenants are the ones that can stop it, and the tenants are the ones are also going to be hurt by this. Yeah. Um, I look at. I've talked to a number of legislators. And I, I see them running full head into this wall. I mean, it's of course, of course, Illinois they are. doesn't need to learn this lesson the hard way. If I look back at a simple article, at the end of 1999, Forbes had an article: the ten dumbest ideas of the century. <laughs> Rent control was number two on the list. <laughs> you know, it's not like it's new that this is. No, stupid. it's not. Uh, it's just, uh, but I mean, you're talking about Caracas North here in Chicago. Uh, so, so are there any um, any legislators who actually can follow your logic when you plot supply and demand curves on a graph? Um, 
I would say virtually every Republican in in office can. Mm-hmm. I've been talking to some of the Democrat, Democratic, uh, particularly the newer legislators, and some of them have actually commented to me as I got to talk to them that we understand rent control is not good, but don't these guys deserve a chance to try it? <laughs> and I don't think <laughs> Illinois needs to be a massive Comical. experiment and failure. I, yeah, we, we've. Yeah, we, if only there was some other city that did this that we could, you know, Model. learn from their example. If only there, this had been tried somewhere. But hey, hey, not here. We got all these smart people in office here. We've got the best and brightest central planners. And hey, why? You know, let's give them a shot. I mean, it's just other people's lives. Let's roll. Let's see what happens. Why not? Right? It's yeah, re- remarkable. I, I mean, Hate, hate to be whining as a landlord, but I've I'm just turned 65 this year. I've been investing for 40 years, so I started fairly young. And I'm looking at somebody that's basically taking the a wide swath through what I've saved for retirement, and you know yeah. putting it in somebody else's hands. And this is not a zero sum game. Our economy isn't. These guys ought to go make their own money doing something it's crim- by a house it's criminal and- it's criminal what they're doing i but, but i want to be specific jane since you're lobbying on this effectively are there is there any legislator that you've talked to that's really willing to champion this not like oh yeah i understand rent control is a bad idea but i'm you know well, what can i do about it is there anybody including in the republican super minority caucuses that is stepping up and saying anything because i haven't heard it um represent representative durkin who's the House Minority Leader. We've talked to no, Mundra, several Mundra, times. He's been it. talking to everybody. Mm-hmm. Well, he's been talking within the legislature. I don't know that he's been talking out in the public. No, God God forbid the public be informed. Okay, uh, Jane Garvey, she's the president of Chicago Creative Investors Association. Uh, the topic of rent control, since uh, legislators just talk to each other and don't do a particularly good job of educating the public, most notably the surrender Republicans, uh, don't wait. Just call your local legislator or call any of the legislators, even if they're not local, and inform them that you oppose road con- rent control, particularly, oh, by the way, for those of you who are tenants listening to this, thinking you're going to somehow stick it to your landlord. You're sticking it to yourself, as Miss Garvey was just explaining. Jane Garvey, thanks so much for joining us. Good luck with the fight. Thank you both. And she joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's news, opinion, insight. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560.